All right. Um, so it's 5 p.m. on February 8th, and um, I'm Julie Chalfont. I'm chair of the Finance Committee. I'm calling us to order. Um, our first item on the agenda is to review and approve the minutes from the previous meeting. Does everybody have a copy? I just mailed those out. I hope everyone got them. All right. So do we have a motion? I'd like to make one correction. Mm -hmm. The next to the last bulletin, bullet point says next meeting February 7th, should read February 8th. Oh, I've got the wrong meeting up. Okay. Make a motion we approve it as uh, corrected. All right, do we have a second? We have a second from Jim. Any discussion? <laughs> Any discussion? No. All right, roll call vote. John Pereski? Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. John Pachurik? Aye. Jim Cambius? Aye. Beth Brown? Aye. Skip Olmstead? Aye. All right. That's unanimous. I don't have my list written down. I got everybody, right? Julie, if you don't mind, I'll just call the select board's meeting to order. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, Trevor and I are here. So we will start our meeting at um, 5.02. Okay. All right. Um, so next item on the agenda is updates from CCI, CIPC, and other committees. Um, so the CCI is the, I always get it wrong, Collaborative Community Initiative. It's the committee of committees um, who are meeting. Um, and one of the things that we were asked to do is come back to our committees because one of the things that happens to the meeting in the meeting is all the committees report on what they're doing. So we're supposed to take that all in and then regurgitate it back to you. Um, so I'm going to give my best shot at doing that. Um, the primary action of the CCI recently has been to come up with this vision for a downtown. Um, and we came up with this statement of the vision. Um, so the vision includes housing, a senior community center, a library, an expanded library, a town hall, and the renovated historical building, which is the old grammar school building where the senior center most recently was, a town common with lovely stuff, um, improved parking bikeways, and then this sort of shared energy and efficient infrastructure, um, which might include a centralized geothermal system that serves all the buildings, zoning and structures designed for accessibility. Um, this is recognizably um, aspirational. It is a big, big take. Um, the idea behind it is that if you have this vision of all this stuff going together, then when people go out and start looking for grants and asking for funding, they have a vision that they can tie that grant back to. So um, my understanding is that this is not necessarily, like nobody thinks this is going to be achieved with taxpayer fund right now, right? This is, this is a huge, huge project. But if pieces can be done through various grant venues, um, then this gives you a goal to work towards that. Carolyn, you look like you have something to say. Oh, I just, just want to say it's connecting communities initiative. Thank you. <laughs> but um, we're hoping to have a mini master plan out of this with phases. And as Julie said, is pu pulling um, grants. <coughs> There's multiple venues to get money. Um, the normal leveraging is for every dollar that we as a town put up for match, you probably, you know, three to four dollars is good. This, what we're envisioning is going to require seven or eight dollars. So it's a huge lift. But that's why we're pulling this all together. Everybody's working together. But I think um, it's a generational opportunity to um, try to get funding for different projects. 
and we're committed to be work together. So there's about 20 commu uh, committees working on this together. And um, I think we're gonna be able to um, pull it off to some extent, but that's why there'll be a mini master plan of the downtown. It will, you know, hopefully we can do it in phases. And as we get pieces of the grant, different grants coming together, we can um, accomplish what we wanna do. Uh, we're just gonna, this is what we're gonna do. There's a public information session scheduled for February 17th at, I didn't write the time down, February 17th say, in six, the evening. Six o'clock, I think. Six o'clock? Um, it's well, on the- well, Wait, that might not be true. Yeah. Um, our normal meeting Thursday, the next meeting of the CCI is Thursday at six. Um, 6.30, 6.30. Okay. Sorry. All right. So then a quick rundown of what the committees are doing. Town Common has come up with a plan for the Town Common is going to CPC to request funds to do that under the CPA Act um, and are moving forward on that. Town Building Advisory Committee has two big projects they're working on right now. One is... Um, working up a CPA application to upgrade the um, old grammar school building where the senior center most recently was um, using CPA funds. So again, that would be an improved building. The town hall would move into that building um, and it would be done using CPA funds, which means no increase to the tax rate. Um, so that's one project and we're working up the paperwork to support it. I think Dave Wolfram is going to be the person who actually brings it forward. Um, but oh, um, whatever. Uh, the other thing that we've just started working on is to try to come up with a, um, a maintenance schedule, I guess might be the term for all of the town buildings, big picture stuff. This building's going to need a roof. That building's going to need whatever upgrades to the plumbing. I don't know. Um, with the idea that you can then plan for the expenses and approach them in a somewhat rational manner. And if, you know, grant funding comes available for things, you can tie it to stuff that you have in your plan. It's going to take, I think, a while to come up with that. That's not a short-term thing, but we have just started working on that. Um, the next committee is Senior Center. There is a survey out, um, I think to everybody 50 and above maybe in town, um, seeking feedback on um, needs and desires for senior center type stuff. So hopefully people who are in that age bracket have seen that and have filled that out. Um, the senior housing group applied for a grant from FERCOG to do a study on um, two sites, two potential sites for senior housing. One is off of Brayburn. Um, and the other one is, I think, kind of behind the library, sort of near where the town, the ball field is there in that area. Um, they are in a, that grant is apparently not sufficient to cover the entire study. So they're also going to CPA, uh, the CPC to ask for CPA money to cover that. Um, the planning board is working on site review and hearings related to the town park going in. The library says that they expect the funding for that grant that they've applied for will come available this July. Um, and they have hired two consultants, one um, to work on fundraising and the other, um, I'm gonna mess this up, to talk everybody into voting for the library. <laughs> what do you call it? Like outreach or something like that. Advocate. Um, what's that? Oh, just an advocate of sorts. Advocate, there we go. Um, that's a good word for it. <coughs> the historical committee has been working on, there was a leak in the basement of the old grammar school building. There were a bunch of town records stored in a vault down there. So they've been working on getting the records out of the vault and looking at the condition of the records and seeing what um, can be done to um, preserve those. It's, it's like town records um, from way, way back. Um, and uh, there's a bunch of town folks who have been pulled into that as well. Finance committee, you guys know what we're up to, financial indicators, and then now we're just kicking off the budget season. Um, the energy committee has worked on solar on the landfill. 
They've um, the street lights have been replaced, and this one is done with um, LED lights, which are um, much lower energy. This was like a the replacement. I think was free to the town, and we get the lower energy benefits out of it. So our our bill should go down for electricity for the town, which is good. Um, they're also looking for an electric. They work on an electric vehicle charger, which will be put into the Leary lot. And um, I mentioned this geothermal idea. They're picking away at this. What would it look like if you had a centralized geothermal system that supplied sort of that central campus set of buildings? Um, CPA committee and CIPC. Um, so Community Preservation Act and what's CIPC? I just lost it. The Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Um, both of those are starting into their reviews um, in preparation for an annual town meeting. Um, and sewer, we're going to get an update tonight on that. So that's my list of stuff that has been talked about. Anybody have any questions on any of that? No, excellent. We'll move on. Go ahead. Are they going to do like the CIPC committee does and prioritize all of our major expenses? I would love to see that happen, to tell you the truth. Um, I would too. That's why I'm asking. I don't know. <laughs> it really depends on what the grants, what grant opportunities there are, John. We, we do have a priority, but um, we have to, we have to go with what's available too. That's why we have to have a mini master plan so that it can be flexible. We're going to have to be flexible. We're, we're asking for too much money not to be flexible. And where I do mean, we stand in the current right, master yeah. plan? Have we restarted that process yet? The what? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't the hear current you. current master know. plan. Have we started the new current master plan because the last one was outdated and ran out, I think, about two years ago? No, we have not funded a new master plan. Well, the last time that when I was chair of the second master plan, the first one, you know, we did for free. We just cut and paste. I did with a committee. The second one was more complicated because the planning board or the state requirements for the planning board and, and community input was much more um, stringent. So we, we uh, appropriated 15 or 20,000. I can't actually remember. I don't think it was 20,000, but it was in the teens and we had a committee and we did the master plan. Master plan is 12 years or more out of date. Julie, I can't even remember, but um, it's been more, it's been, it was when I was on the planning board. So it's gotta be John, it's almost 20 years old. It has to be. So um, a new master plan would probably be 30 to 40,000 and no money has been appropriated to do that process. Okay, something to think about. Yep. I'm, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm talking about a mini master plan, I'm talking about the committee putting together um, what we wanna do not for just for the downtown area, not a town-wide master plan. Go ahead, Skip. Carolyn, did I hear you correct when you said that we have um, a priority list of, of the various projects? Uh, and if that's the case, could we get a copy of it, I guess? Well, I, I would say the CCI, we, we can put together the list. I, we don't have a place for the seniors. So I, I feel like that has got to be the number one priority. I don't think there's, I think there's consensus on it. The problem is this group hasn't had enough time to say, this is where we're gonna spend the money uh, yet. We haven't had, we, we need another two or three weeks together. And we're gonna get community input on the 17th that's where hoping people will come. And out of that should be a priority, mini master plan priority priority list. But um, the seniors don't have a senior center and we, we've got to address that right away. So I think there's con consensus that's probably number one. Right. 
Any other questions on the CCI update? Skip, do you have an update on the CIPC where you guys are? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, Carolyn, you were at the last meeting. Uh, <laughs> we're we're just sorting through. We haven't had a chance to interview anybody yet. Um, we have more than we can fund. I, I think it's safe to say. So there will be a priority list coming out of the CIPC. And again, I would hope that we can get something together by the beginning of March. Thanks. Um, so I had hoped as part of our budget review process, that as people come forward to the finance committee for their budgets, if they have a capital project in that they could brief us on that capital project just so that we get the, the information from that person. Um, who do I talk to about just getting that, the list of projects so I, we remember to ask the people when they come to the meeting? <laughs> um, Julie, you know what I'll do? Um, I'll ask Casey to send you um, the, oh, there's Casey. Oh. Hi, Casey. Hi, may I speak? Please. So I just got off a call this afternoon from Mark Brennan. We're going to be revising that list for presentation next week at the CIPC meeting on Wednesday. Y'all are welcome to attend. We've reached out to ask two people to present. Um, so we should have something for people to chew on by Monday, I think. And if you'd like to be included in that, I can blind carbon copy the committee. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Let's see okay. Um, John Pareski, do you have any update from personnel? I do not. I've been away for two or three weeks. <laughs> uh, they met last night. I, I, I can't give you an update. Okay. Next time. Um, all right. So next on our agenda is our revenue forecast. Brenda, would you like to take us through that? Where are you? There you are. <laughs> I'd be happy to. Let me um, share. Um, and actually, we'll start. We'll start with the tax levy. All of you got a copy of this. Um, And it, you know, the tax levy is pretty simple. You know, we've got the levy limit, um, the two and a half percent, which is the 307,384. You add new growth to that. And I, I have to say it was a little more aggressive with new growth than I, than I have been. Um, I, I get more aggressive every year knowing what our needs are, but um, I know that sounds kind of silly, but, um, you can see what our new growth has been in the past years. And fiscal 20 wasn't the greatest, but uh, the other three years were quite high. So I figured at 150,000, I'm probably still being conservative, even though I think I'm being aggressive. Um, so that brings us to our levy limit of uh, 12,752,759. We have our debt exclusion and the debt exclusion at this point is, is really um, a shot in the dark to a certain extent. Um, there are some knowns like the highway garage, um, but really we don't know what the waste tre wastewater treatment plant upgrade is gonna cost us this year. We plugged in 50,000 for the tax rate exclusion. Um, so that's a $200,000 interest payment um, that we're thinking we might have, um, of which 25% is in this budget. So that brings us up to the maximum allowable levy of 13,300,000. And that's a, that's a comparable increase uh, to all the other years. You can see we had 4.52% increase in 2019, 3.54 in 20, 4.31 in 21 and 3.69% in 22. So my projections for 23, I think are, are, are pretty good at this point. Um, there will be some adjustments as we know a little bit more about what our debt might be. Um, 
Any questions on that? Looks like Trevor does. Trevor. <laughs> I don't know if I'm clapping or raising my hand. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't get these things right. Uh, one question I had was on frontier um, exclusion. Did did we have a number yet? Uh, on we don't that? have anything from frontier, so there's okay. nothing in the budget as far as their as their debt goes. So there been, will be some this year, I take it. Yes, and we've okay. been talking a little bit about that. So I'm on the um, capital uh, committee for for and, and really there was not much uh that was going to come but you know we kind of thought i was thinking we should probably you know start to look at paying down some of that debt because the um you know the interest was pretty low and you know, i don't anyways we could talk i just thought i i saw it blank i just want to ask what you what your thoughts were on that so you just don't have anything yet from them nope nothing okay. nothing from them yeah. all right um so, like I said, that'll that'll all change between now and and the time that we have town meeting, but hopefully not too much. Any news on the Oxford property? Uh, not that I know of, Casey. Maybe you could speak to that better than anyone at this point. <clears throat> so, if you don't mind, um, right now the town is working through a purchase and sale agreement with New Pro. And there's some details that we need to discuss with council next week. I'm hoping we can settle it, but I can't guarantee when that's gonna happen. But you're in discussion, so that sounds promising. Yeah. Good, yes. Thank you. Um, Anybody else? Oh, I was gonna say, can I just add to that? Um, either way, we're gonna need a special town meeting between now and April. Um, to either pay down part of that debt because there will be a requirement to pay a portion of that down and that was not budgeted or or to pay down all of it or pay off all of it if we get the money in uh, by that time. Okay, thanks. Anybody else have questions on this tax levy calculation? I don't see any hands. All right. We're ready for the next one. So then, um, let's see, the revenue detail. Um, let's see if we can blow that up a little bit. I don't want to blow it up too much. Um, can you see that? Let's see. Can you see that all right on your screens? I can, yes. Okay. So um, let's see, let's go back up to the top. The top, there's that the tax levy number, the, the 13,300, that just comes over from the tax levy page that I just showed you. And then um, the uh, state has, the governor has issued his, his proposal for the uh, cherry sheet budget, uh, the state budget. So I have plugged those numbers in um, based on what he has given us. Uh, you can see, uh, if you come down here to the net, we're going to lose about $9,000 in total. Um, even though our revenues, uh, you can see up here the revenues, the net revenues are a million eight. Uh, so that gives us an extra $46,000. But go back down here to the cherry sheet charges, and our charges have increased $55,000, um, mainly due to charter school and uh, school choice. And that is um, pretty comparable. You can see that we've been paying, at least for school choice, we've been paying quite a bit. Uh, charter school has just been increasing from year to year to year. Do you have a uh, feel, is that because there are more kids going out or that the costs of the schools is increasing? Not, not knowing how they, come up with those numbers I, I couldn't tell you but I would I would guess it's probably a combination of both it's it's, it's um, number of kids is increasing that we've had the same right. cost okay. five thousand dollars flat since they started oh that's right well yeah, yeah. charter schools right is charter schools though yeah charter schools is, is up I, I do think it's more kids going out and I think a lot of it had to do with COVID and you know people just were really changed their how they wanted to educate their kids over the last couple of years.
um, we're ready to move on to the next line. Um, I, I do have a question. You said 5,000 flat for school choice? Yes. yes. So in, in, am I correct then in that there's 20, uh, uh, what, 35 students school choicing out of, out of Deerfield then and a comparable number going to charter schools? Charter, charter schools, schools is different. Yeah. Okay. Like charter schools is out, whatever right? the cost. Um, <clears throat> like what aggravates us is that charter schools can go up to thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I don't know. Each school has a different charge. They have to justify their charges, but the cap is thirty. So you're paying almost private school costs for kids to go to charter school. It's just, and we have absolutely no control, no fiscal ability to influence it. So the um, the school choice it's five thousand flat rate plus any special ed or special services that the kids need. Right. So that's why it's not a straight multiple of five thousand. Right. Yeah. If if you have a special ed kid coming school choicing in, it's the five thousand plus school choice. It's same as if we send somebody, it's five thousand plus whatever services. John Presky, go ahead. Do we have to pay for transportation for school choice or charter school? No, we only pay that for um, Smith Folk. So then the parent or the family pays? Yes. Thank Unless you. it's located in your town. That was why we were having kind of a fit um, about Channing Beat, but that's a, you know another story. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, we're ready for the next section. Okay. So our next section is just what uh, the assessors might choose to reserve for overlay. Um, the last few years have been pretty consistent except for fiscal year 22 in which they reserved 94,000. Um, and they did do that because that was their research year and they did expect um, a few extra abatements and exemptions than what they would normally have. And they have used all but 35,000 of that at this date. So, um, so it was a good choice that they did increase it. So for fiscal year 23, I just threw in 55,000 thinking that we'd be back to a normal, mm -hmm. a normal reserve for that. And then we come down to local receipts. Um, I think I'm gonna switch over to my, I have a spreadsheet for local receipts um, that I hope, let's see. Um, I'm gonna just do a quick, so that you can see this a little bit better. Can you all see that? Not yet. I think you have to stop sharing and then share again. Do I need to do that? Okay. Looks good to me. Um, because you were going to show something else. Yeah. 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 Okay. There, there we go. go. Yep. All right. Good. Yeah. So I have this large spreadsheet in which um, I've, I've, I've hidden some of the numbers so that you can't see it all because I want to, I wanted to blow it up big enough so that you could you could see what was important, and that's the five year average, the eighty percent of the five year average, eighty five percent of the five year average, and then what I was suggesting for fiscal year twenty three. Um, so the first line is motor vehicle excise, and and in almost all cases, I've taken eighty five percent of a five year average and said, okay, I think that's reasonable. It's a little higher than I'd like it to be, but it's reasonable for what what um, we could plug in for uh, an estimate for that. Um, hey Brenda, can I ask a question up front? Um, yeah. What what do you, what did you do? Well, last year is not a good example. Let's say three years ago. What what have you traditionally done? Has it always, have you always used that 85 or have you used 80 or? 
we have used 80 most of the time uh, up until the last couple of years. The last couple of years, I got a little braver, um, partly because our revenues have been coming in pretty good. I don't know um, if you can see. So, let's see if you can see all of the numbers. Um, These bolded uh, numbers represent the actual. So, so where I have my cursor right now, the 2,268,000 was what we received in 2020. And what we received in 2021 was a million nine. So yeah. those are our most recent numbers. And you can see that they had gone down um, for a lot of different reasons. Um, but prior to that, they averaged anywhere between 2.2 million and 2.4 million for the most part. So, um, does that answer your question, Julie? I, I that does. Yes. Thanks. Trevor, you have another question? Uh, just about the motor vehicles. Have we, um, because I know they're so hard to get right now and everybody's, you know, having a hard time. Uh, are we still seeing enough of that revenue coming in or do we see it into, I don't know when we see the number, but I know it's hard for people to get vehicles. So I wondered if it's gonna be a tough year for that. It is, and, and you can see um, from fiscal year 2020 down to fiscal year 21, yep. we went down almost a hundred thousand. Right. Um, and and I made an assumption that it was, was due to that, but we were still at 682,000. Right. So those 630 seems a little aggressive. I think it it's still okay. Okay. Um, I don't know. Like I say, this some of this is a shot in the dark. And yeah. and though I most of the time plug in 85%, that sometimes I, I have other information or I know how the trend is going. So I might choose something a little bit different. Um, if we go back over here to um, excise, so these other excise fees are your rooms and meals tax. And you can see in fiscal year 2021, it was only 175,000. Um, I see the trend going back up. So, and I thought maybe because of Treehouse, we would be seeing more. So I did increase the um, estimate to 230,000, which is basically the 85% of the five-year average. Um, anybody have any other suggestions or any other thoughts on this, feel free to say so. Um, if you think that we should be doing something different, um, I've plugged something in, but these are all, you know, these are all numbers that can change for any, any number of reasons. So, uh, interest on taxes, um, that trend has basically been going down, I think in fiscal year 20, we were just a little over 40. 40,000, um, 43,000 in 2021. You can see 85% is 36,000. I've rounded it down to 35,000, pretty simple. Um, the next line is payments in lieu of taxes. You know, we've generally been collecting a good amount of money on payments in lieu of taxes. However, um, there was, I, we are going to see some reduced revenue from Deerfield Academy, and I can't, the state will not let me budget more than what we've received. I don't know how much of a difference that's going to make, but 110000 is still too high if we don't have any money from Deerfield Academy. Um, if we get half of our money from Deerfield Academy, 110000 is still being aggressive. Um, they generally give us, I think last year it might've been 120,000. I don't remember the exact number, but you can see out of 184,000 collected in 2021, most of it was Deerfield Academy. So, um, and I, I don't know if all of you are aware, but they are working on a project at the um, congregational church for us and have been granted permission to cut back on their donation to us um, to be able to complete that project. 
Now, whether they reduce it halfway or they reduce it 100%, that will affect this number. Um, let's go back over here. John, John Bresky, go ahead. Yeah. Um, if, if they're contributing to the, whatever's happening at the church, um, that's taking what would be revenue yes. and turning it into a capital expenditure. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Right. Well, they're, they're, Um, basically, um, I wouldn't say eliminating our need to spend money on that capital yeah, expenditure, right. but they're reducing what we will spend on that capital expenditure quite drastically. So in the end, it will benefit us in that the money we don't spend in that appropriation will go back into free cash for next year. But the revenue that we are not getting, I can't budget for. So, um, we will have to cut back on our on our revenue projections for that. Is there a review process to approve that? To um, approve what? Well, the non they're paying us in lieu of us spending money, capital money. Um, if we if we were to spend the money ourselves, CIPC would have to approve it, right? Well, we had budgeted, remember last yes. fall, we went to special town meeting and we used uh, free cash to put in a line item for capital for 150,000 for the church. Okay. Right. Yeah. So basically we're not That's going good. to spend that now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that so answers. so instead of, instead of giving us a donation in money, they're going to give us a donation in uh, doing the repairs on the church for us. And we don't have to spend the 150. Okay. Right. Thank. You. Okay. Thank you. Casey, go ahead. You have a comment. It did go through capital. Yeah. Prior, uh, right after town meeting, we got the vote pending capital's approval of it, and capital approved it after a special town meeting last year. Thanks. All right. Um, trash While we're paused for a oh. second, um, Bob, just to let you know, as soon as we're done with this, you're up. So it'll be another, like maybe, I don't know what, 10 minutes or so. Sorry. Yeah. I, I should go through it a little faster then. Sorry about no, that. No, go ahead. I forgot about the time. This is good. <laughs> so um, our trash fees, um, 155,000. Uh, that is a little higher than the 85%, but you know, um, close enough. Um, other fees, um, Oh goodness, what's all included in that? That's um, that's uh, police fees. It's um, oh, mm. oh, I'm drawing a blank. Um, oh, peg access is a is a is a large one in there. Um, so all of our peg access money goes into fees. Um, but that's pretty stable at 155,000, I think is, is a real reasonable number for uh, an estimate for fiscal year 23. Um, the next line item is rentals. Um, we are now collecting rent from uh, the EMS operation over there um, on Deerfield Road or Greenfield Road. Um, but 75% uh, of that is going straight into a stabilization fund. So only 25% of it goes into revenue. Uh, we are collecting a little bit more than 40,000 uh, at this point in time, but that's about all that we can afford to um, budget for. Um, then we have licenses and permits. This is where Bob comes in. <laughs> um, so this would be uh, building inspection fees. This would be our plumbing and gas, our electric fees. Um, Oh, it would also be any uh, the Board of Health fees, so for the septic and for other Board of Health fees. Um, we budgeted for 230000 in fiscal year 22. I think 230000 is still a, a decent number to budget for. You never know um, 
what we're going to get what Deerfield Academy might be doing or what what any of the other private schools might do, but we can't always budget for something like that. So it has to be a number that doesn't include those big ones in there. So 230,000 uh, is higher than our 85% of our, our five year average, but I still think that's a reasonable number based on the history. The Board of Health increased its fees, so I, I agree with yes. you, Brenda. Yeah, they did, and I've already seen um, the result of some of that in the in in the financial statements. Um, I'll, I'll be interested to see how much that affects that by the end of the year. Yeah. Um, fines and for, forfeits. Uh, we only collected thirty eight thousand in fiscal year twenty one. Um, but there were some fees that we were not collecting because of COVID. Um, I felt like that wasn't a real good picture of what, what we would normally collect. So I did throw in 50,000 as the estimate. Um, investment income, uh, I see that going up a little bit. I think we budgeted, yes, we budgeted 15,000 for this fiscal year. So I figured 20,000 would be reasonable for fiscal 23. Then we have the Medicaid reimbursement, which comes through the school's uh, request. Um, and that has been dropping. You can see last year it was at 19,000. So I felt like 15,000 was the max that we could we could budget for that for fiscal 23. And then the miscellaneous non-recurring, I have to have a good reason to budget anything there. Um, so I keep that low, even though the history usually supports something a little bit higher, but I can't justify that to the state because I have to actually itemize to the state what I expect to get for that $8,000. <laughs> so that brings us down to a million six seventy-eight. dollars um, Our budget for fiscal year 22 was a million six forty-two. I know it's not a big change and not a big increase. Um, if we were still getting the money from the VA, I would say it would be higher than that, but I can't justify Mm -hmm. um the higher figure not at this point in time yes john um the marijuana money is that going to be something that might come in i was and it's, told and it's not, not on here and is it worth is it even worth talking about i was told not to plan on that for right now because we don't know is that okay trevor's right not yeah yet. not quite ready yet yeah. i would agree any, do you have any idea at all <laughs> what it might amount to when it happens if you don't you don't that's okay no not at the moment okay thank you yep fingers crossed well <laughs> I, we were we were hoping between 30 and fifty thousand a year but john honestly the town was been trying to be really proactive on this and it has not you know we just haven't been able to get any money so i don't know We'll see. Thank you. So I'm going to go back to the um, just just for the essence of time, go back to this. So that's that million six seventy eight that I did plug in here for local receipts. Yep. Um, the receipts reserved for debt. That's the amortization of the garage loan that is dictated to me. So that amount I've plugged in. These next three numbers uh, for the administrative costs, I, I don't have all of the budgets in to calculate those yet, so I haven't even changed those from last year. Um, those are the only other revenue sources that I'm aware of that we might have for this fiscal year other than the Dickinson Trust money, and the Dickinson Trust money is actually we figured it today, it's at 2709. Um, that just brings us down to our free cash. And this number here, this million twenty-six thousand, is the net of our our free cash certification less what we spent last fall at our special town meeting. So that's what we have left is a million twenty-six thousand. Just for ha-has, I threw in three hundred thousand as being what we would reserve or set aside that we wouldn't use for this fiscal year. And that brings us to total revenues of 17,245,000 as a quick and dirty estimate. All right. Thank you for going through that. Anybody have any questions? No. All right. So we are ready to discuss the 
Inspections Department budgets. So, Brenda, do you want to? I, I can certainly um, pull up those budgets for. That'd be great. Um, let's start with 241-5110. Do we have a motion for that? So you can see. I'll make a motion to get it on the floor to approve inspections department payroll count 241-5110 for 169177 dollars. Yes. Do we have a second? Second. All right. So there, um, there isn't a lot. Oh, do you want me to speak, Julie? Go for it. Okay. There isn't a lot here that has changed. <coughs> um, the um, hourly rates are the rates that were proposed by uh, Mary Accardi when she was here in the spring as far as um, where Bob and uh, Sue fit into the compensation plan. So, so those are the, the top number here and the bottom number. And then these ones in between are the um, assistants. So uh, we have the uh, plumbing inspector, the electrical inspector, the gas inspector, and then um, the, uh, the, the person who would fill in for Bob uh, when he goes on vacation or if he's sick. And so the only number that changed for those three lines was that the person that filled in for Bob when he was on vacation and such used to be at $35 an hour. He has brought that up to $38 an hour to match what the other inspectors had been getting. So that is the only number that's changed there. And I should stop speaking. So Bob, if you wanted to say more. <laughs> you no, you're, you're doing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the only the just the step increase and the uh, changing the uh, you know the uh, the fill in building inspector to thirty eight dollars. And this is the class and compensation plan that was approved earlier this year by Correct. Select Board and Finance Committee. Okay, anybody have any questions? Any further discussion? All right, it has been moved and second for uh, count number 241-5110 for the amount of $169,177. We'll do a roll call vote. John Pereski. Aye. John Paterk. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Uh, Beth Brown. Aye. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That's unanimous. All right. And the other one is 241-5400. Do we have a motion for that? Move. Well. Who John Pereski, was that you? Did you move that? No. John Paterk. No. John Paterk. Okay. Um, do we have a second? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Brenda, do you want to present anything or Bob? Um, well, this, I will. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing we changed here was we upped the meetings and conferences by $200, I believe. Um, and that's only because the plumbing inspectors go to a lot more trainings and conferences than I thought, of, or, you know, then it just was getting close. So I, Thought that was a fair increase. Other than that, it's pretty much the same exact thing. Seems pretty reasonable to me. Anybody have any questions? No. All right. It's been moved and seconded for account number 241-5400 for the amount of $4,950. Roll call vote. John Pachurik. Aye. John Pereski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Beth Brown. Aye. Skip Olmstead? Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That's you, All right. Okay. 
That was pretty quick and painless, Bob. Yeah. That, that, that was really easy. All right. All right. Thanks for coming by. Okay. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda. We have 10 minutes. All right. Um, next item on the agenda is the financial indicators um, yet again. So the only thing that has changed is we wrote up a um, a summary of, uh, what do you call it? An executive summary. Um, which I'm gonna pull up and share here. The heck? Sorry. All right, which is here. Um, so here's what I was thinking we would do with this. Um, we've been through all of the financial indicators as a group. Um, if we are happy with those financial indicators, I'd like to post them on the finance committee website with an executive summary, which I'm proposing this would be our executive summary that we post. Um, I would be happy to come to the select board and give a presentation on this or do like a public presentation on this if we think it would be useful. Otherwise, we can just put it out there and see if we get any feedback or questions. <coughs> I guess just to start with, um, since I wrote this, I will move that we accept this as an executive summary of the, um, whatchamacallit, the financial indicators. Second. All right, so that's been moved and seconded. Um, I'll give you a minute. Do people need a minute to read through it? Yes. Okay. Oh. Um, Julie, since uh, ARC's educational expenses are close to 70% of our budget, um, I just, I think one of the indicators should be how much the state is, is giving us per student. Um, when I first started as a select board, I actually went to Boston. John Pachorik will remember this. We can, we were protesting um, the state because it was like 32 to 34 percent. And it did bump up to like 36 percent of the cost of students. But over the course of my experience as select board, it's down to like 21, between 21 and 22 percent of the cost of educating the kids. So it's not that I don't the raw data of what you're saying is that people's tax bills have gone up, but I think it's also really important to show that we have supported our schools and that what's happening is the state is giving us less and less money towards the total cost of our education and they have not increased school choice. And we as a community have been trying to think about not school choicing but unfortunately, you know, in the, as a regional school system, you know, we have to take on school choice kids that come from the other elementary schools as well. And as our percentage of frontier increases for, you know, um, the number of kids that we actually send, the school choice kids move into frontier and they're not counted. And I, you know, that is a huge issue that our education, how we fund education is not sustainable. I know I'm a broken record. I talk about it all the time, but it's a huge issue. We have a temporary waiver under the new school ed formula because Skip Olmstead remembers years ago, probably three or four years ago, it was pre-COVID anyway, the school um, education budget was going to have a new formula and it looked like we were gonna be penalized um, by three to four hundred thousand dollars per year, and we made a big effort to to figure that out, and we did get a temporary waiver, but it's temporary, and it's very scary to me. This is probably the most scary thing besides OPED, which you know I've been screaming about for years. So it's it's hanging over our heads, and I it's not that I don't appreciate your work. I just think that this is a huge financing the schools has got to be in the financial indicators because it's not good, it's not sustainable. So one of the financial indicators is state aid. Um, and we have marked that 
that financial indicator is unfavorable because of exactly what you've said, that state eight has dropped consistently as a percentage of our total revenues. And so in the past 10 years, from 2012 to 2021, it's gone from 12.6% to 9.1%. So that is a recognized issue that is brought out in the um, in the indicators. I didn't put it in the summary, so maybe we should add that. Well, I'm, I'm just saying that if you look at the total cost to educate regular ed, not special ed, regular ed, <laughs> And then the, mm-hmm. what we get back from the state, it is much more drastic than that um, drop. Than that drop even. Yes. Okay. I think the school funding is, it's like now it's like 21% or something. It's 21.2 or something. I don't know. Maybe Trevor knows more. He's, he's um, involved in the schools. I don't know. But you're, you're right on the money on this. It's, it, yeah been very difficult and you know we, we did track down that that woman at, at uh, MMA and, and we're able to kind of Carolyn was on that to get in, in a lot of work in the staff office here to get that waiver done but I don't know how long that's going to last and when you get a new administration coming in who knows I, I we have we have real problems with the new formula we're really penalized um, the 01342 district is one of the 14th wealthiest in the state and we collect hardly any taxes. So we were able to, um, you know, show that. And about a third of the 01373 zip code is Waitley. So the Waitley income is assessed to Deerfield, but it is not the population. It's not offset by that Waitley population. It's assessed to just the Deerfield population. So we were able to get that weightly income pulled out temporarily. So I, I don't know what we're going to do really. If this kicks in, this is a huge, huge impact. Um, and we have to do something. I just want to uh, give my two cents that this is, this is amazing work. I love it. It, it. Great job. It looks awesome. It's nice to have it all laid, laid out for people yeah. to understand. And I do think it's worth coming to the select board or just somehow publicly, you know, standing on the soapbox and saying what you've done. It's good work. And it's, you know, people always wonder, like, what, what's going on? And, you know, here it's all laid out really clear and concise for them. I think it's just great work. So thank you. I, I appreciate it. I, I really do, too. I'm, I'm, this was not a criticism. It's just I think yeah. that the school funding is is not sustainable. And I know I say the same thing all the time, but we really have to pay attention to that. <laughs> um, anybody from finance committee have any, go ahead, John Presky. Um, you said that personnel costs have remained a fairly steady percentage of our operating budget. Mm-hmm. Per, I guess uh, it's been going up every year. Um, slowly, granted, but it is going up. So I guess I disagree with the accuracy of that statement. Um, it kind of, I kind of, kind of, I guess Carolyn supports my position too. That I, I don't think it's a good thing right now. So we've gone, okay. If we divide just, it into- just my opinion, of course. So um, why don't you propose that we strike that line from this, amend this to strike this line? You want a motion? Yeah. Okay, I make a motion. We strike the line that says personnel costs have remained a fairly steady percentage of our operating budget. Do we have a second for that? I will second it. Okay. Um, so any discussion just on amending this right up to remove that line? Anybody agree? I don't disagree. <laughs> um, so what, I guess, I don't have the numbers in front of me, so, but does anyone remember what the percentage of our budget has been personnel? I mean, are we talking... 
how much of an increase has there been? I mean, if I remember when we were discussing this at length, it did not seem to be going up too much. I don't have the... Um... So I've just shared it. Um, did I share it? Are you guys seeing it? Yes. Okay. Um, so it has gone, the total has gone from 58, 48 and a half to 53 and a half. So it's gone up 5% in since 2013. So that's actually, you're right, John, that has increased not pretty much lot, every year. Not a, not a lot, but enough that I don't think we can say what we're saying. Yeah. And then I divided that into, so we have non-school salaries, school salaries, and health benefits. So if you throw the health benefits out and you just compare the non-school salaries to the non-school operating expenditures, we've gone from 37.2 to 39.5. And then if you compare the school salaries to the school operating expenditures, they've gone from 37 to 44 and a half. Not sustainable. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I, I think, John, that you've got a point and that we should take that line out. Um, any other discussion? No. So we have a motion that we amend this write up to remove this line that's highlighted. Personnel costs have remained a fairly steady percentage. Um, let's do a roll call vote just on this amendment. John Paturic? Aye. John Pereski. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Beth Brown. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Julia Chalfant. Aye. All right, it's gone. So any other discussion on the whole item? Trevor has his hand up. Well, I'm not part of the board. I just wanted to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll okay. wait. I'll wait to speak after. Okay. Any other discussion on this item? Trevor, do you want to say something about this whole thing before we vote? Well, it was just about the, the personnel and that um, it, it's getting harder and harder to run this town on the personnel we have, like regard and like the cost of employees that we need to bring in. And I'll kind of get that just as it relates to sewer. But, you know, it isn't sustainable, but somehow we've got to figure out a way to kind of run the town because it is it, it is um, we're struggling right now to do the amount of stuff that the town needs with the amount of personnel, and what it costs to pay them. But yeah, that's all. Thanks, Jim, go ahead. Given that the town's population has been relatively flat for decades, why is the town government getting unsustainable with the same number of people? We've, we, we didn't do anything for years. So uh, I, I say that like um, tongue in cheek, like we didn't take on projects. We didn't take on a bunch of grants. We, you know, we've built a school, you know, but as it relates to many other towns, like where many other towns take on debt and they, they do projects and, and we're starting to do that now. And, and with the staff that we have, the, the laws are a lot more cumbersome, the amount of work pushed on us from the state is a lot more cumbersome. It just takes more bodies to do, you know, just to kind of catch up. I, I feel like we, we should be doing, we should have been doing more over the years. And, uh, and I just think it's hard to, to do all the projects that need to get done with the staff we have. And, and like we, we, we've been kind of by our fingernails for a long time. And we really, you know, we either need to step up and, and, uh, support the staff to do the work we want to do, or we just step back and stop doing the work or, you know, other projects that are coming along. Just my two cents, but. Also in general, the household number of households has increased. You have uh, less people in the households, but you have increased households. That has changed. Well, that's an interesting point. All right, any further discussion on this item? No, so it has been moved and accepted that it moved and seconded that we accept um, this executive summary of the financial indicators as amended. Um, 
Roll call vote. John Pareski. Aye. John Maturk. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Beth Brown. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. All right. So we are ready for the um, presentation from Trevor on the wastewater treatment plant. You're muted. <clears throat> Bear with me a moment. Um, sure. Pull up this. Uh, well, this should work, but there we go. So a um, little bit of update on where, where we are, kind of, um, you know, wh wh where we are now, where we're going, what, what we've been working on. So we've come a long way since the planning of, you know, 2017 and 18, and, uh, and certainly before that. There's a lot of people that have been working, working on this project for a long time. Um, and, and looking at that, we've moved a long ways from the, you know, from the to the vote to secure the debt and the financing for the project in 2019. So I'll give a high level view of what we're working on and, and what we still need to address as a community in the months to come and years to come. I'll provide some information on the cost of the current approved project and some options to decide on in the near future and then some rough budgets for future projects. Um, so just a, a quick overview of kind of what we <laughs> Are working on or what we need to work on um, you know we have the south deerfield wastewater plant and so we have um, kind of phase one uh, which is underway right now we did an emergency repair of the secondary clarifier before that that was a that was a separate vote and um, we didn't do a debt exclusion for that we just we just repaired that so that's that's done so we have phase one um, we have phase two and phase two al alternates and then phase two, uh, phase three, which was really not in the original plan, but just stuff we've kind of talked about and different avenues of funding that we could do for resiliency and, and some other things we should do, but um, weren't, weren't in the original plan. Then we have the old Deerfield plant um, rehabilitation, or we looked at pump stations um, and, and piping, all of that waste from South Deerfield, uh, from the old Deerfield plant to the South Deerfield plant, because that plant will now um, once our phase one and two are done, would be able to accept all of that. Um, so we, we looked at that that option. Um, so so it's either the pump station or it's uh, update the plant, or we or we band aid the plant for several years at a time, just kind of keep rolling along. Um, but uh, the issue is with that plan is that things are just becoming older and you can't get, and it keeps kind of breaking down. Um, so so that's that's been tough. So. We also have the collection system, um, which is all the piping, you know, in the roads and 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 leading to people's houses. Um, uh, that that needs, you know, we we had um, we've done a project where we sent cameras through every single pipe in Old Deerfield and South Deerfield to kind of get the idea of what you know what condition they're in, what cut type of pipe it is, um, what what condition the manholes are. Um, what needs to be replaced now, um, you know, is urgent, what, what can be done later on. So, uh, so that project was completed in, in Old Deerfield and, and South Deerfield. Um, so then we also have up in Old Deerfield, we have like the Pine Nook Road really came out of that, that camera project was the pipes leading up to, to Eagle Brook and uh, on Pine Nook Road are, are probably the worst pipes in our in our uh, whole infrastructure. They're they're really in bad shape. So, um, and then we had a, a, another one that was really critical was was the kind of the, the last collection pipe to the plant, um, and that kind of went through DA's property, and and there's still a little bit more leading to the plant. Um, so I'll talk about that a little bit too. Uh, staffing is also a really tough thing. Um, you know, we're very shorthanded, uh, as is the rest of the state and the country for wastewater operators and chief operators. Um, right now, we're running the plant on one 
operator, uh, two plants on one operator. We, uh, we have yet to secure another chief operator and having a really hard time finding any operators at all. So um, we are working on an MOU with Amherst to help us through the transition. So a lot like they did with the, with the water department um, when they had transition for the leadership there, uh, Amherst was, was, was great and they had an MOU with that, um, that district to be able to, um, you know, if there was a project coming up, they would kind of go out to bid. They'd say, hey, Amherst, we have this work to do. Um, can you can you give us a hand? And we would pay them and probably administration fee to do that. So we're we're working on finishing up that. Um, DBC or uh, Dave Prickett Engineering has been uh, very instrumental in bridging this gap for us, um, but it does cost money. So um, we've had Pete down at the plant. Um, you know, when our operator left, like computer wiped, we uh, had to kind of restart from zero and say, where are our files? Um, what reports need to go to e, uh, EPA, DEP. Um, we had to kind of rebuild the wheel there, uh, and we have rebuilt standing operating procedures for uh, for both plants. Um, that I just got this week, um, had a draft a couple weeks ago, and final one this week. So, you know, we kind of know what to do, what you check, what, what the tasks are at each plant, um, but there's been a lot to work through without any real staff to kind of tell us what they used to do. Um, so that that's in, in good shape and we have Pete down there helping to kind of get the numbers uh, to DEP and we've been working with uh, DEP on a lot of the reports needed and they've been really great uh, through this process as well. Um, but but staffing has been that's been very tough. Um, we are closing in on a chief operator, we're hoping, um, you know, but we're finding we need to pay more money than at any other time for labor right now. Uh, it's a very tough market to bring people in. Um, so we're sorting through that. Um, we do have some data. I, I attended a, so our MMA conference was canceled last um, month in, in Boston, but there have been workshops throughout the last couple of weeks. And yesterday at, at noon, there was a, a workshop on DPW, which covered some, some of um, wastewater operating and you know all kinds of stuff that has to do with DP, um, DPW and that um, there was some good information and and they did some um, salary studies and that kind of thing as it related to wastewater so I'm hoping to get those slides soon so I can kind of update Casey and we could all kind of talk about about where we're at where we're at as a state kind of relating to this this one issue because it's been very tough to get people um, so uh, this is just a quick overview of kind of the debt schedule, right? Or, or just payments for the first phase of the project. Um, and uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what we've done, we, you know, we had our first ban um, and, and then in uh, June, we're going to need a, a second ban uh, for this project. Um, and that will roll in about nine thousand uh, nine million three fifty is about the amount we worked this out with Barb before she left as well. Another item that we've been struggling with is as um, obviously you all know that um, that Barb is gone, so that that's put a lot more stress on it on everybody in in office. Um, so, but this kind of gives you an idea, and then our, our final ban. Um, you know, would at the end, and, and that would cover the first phase of the project, which is around $16 million. We went out for bid um, for the project, hoping it was coming in around 12 and a half to, you know, 13 in that range and came in a lot higher. Uh, the two bids we got were, were quite a bit higher. And just with the market that is out there right now, um, one, you can't get materials, and if you can, you, you're paying through the nose for them. So, um, but we've lucked out to get a really great contractor. Wastewater Industries has been fantastic. Um, so this will, you know, I can I can get you any of this stuff that's in this slide. I just kind of took print screens from a lot of the different files I have to give you an update on on a lot of this. Um, I'll just bump to the next one. This kind of gives you. Let me slide this over here. So this gives a little bit uh, of a. a description of where, you know, our loan amount and the grant amount. This was our first project, um, first, you know, a bid with USDA. And then we we decided, select board decided 
um, and I think we spoke with finance as well, just kind of talking about what do we do? We got these two bids, how we should move forward. We decided to move forward with the, with the first bid and the alternates. Um, and that, that kind of gave us, it was about just under $4 million um, additional and, and USDA added to their loan. So they gave us another loan of um, just under $3 million. And then uh, the town would come up with a 1.6 million. And the applicant contribution was just the, uh, the initial payment that we had to pay for the project. Uh, we paid that a while back. Um, so, so this is phase one, as it is right now, 16 million, just over $16 million for phase one. And uh, this kind of breaks it out a little bit more for people. Um, you know, we have a, a pretty healthy contingency in, in the project as well. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit um, later as, as well. So um, just, and again, I can get you these files when you need them for, for ideas on the project, but that, that's the 16 million for the first phase. Um, this kind of just shows you the rates. I tried to capture it, it was on two pages. So the first rate for USDA was, um, was two and a quarter, two two and an eighth percent, which is a great rate for forty years uh, for for a large project like that. So, um, and then when we went out to bid in that time uh, between our first you know go around with USDA and then the the overrun the rates um, we we were able to get the poverty rate, which was great, was about one in three eighths um, percent. So just to kind of give you an idea of the rates that we're paying on the on the 40 year notes, because um, they are two separate projects, um, two separate loans with USDA, but they're kind of grouped under one umbrella. Um, and those are fixed, right? There's that's correct. no guaranteed it won't go up. That's correct. It could only go down, but just with the market the way it is, I don't I think we're kind of be that that's where we'll be at. That's right. They're fixed. Um, oh, I'm sorry. How do I go back? previous there we go um so uh what we need to decide on for the balance of phase one is do we create a change order um to use our contingency that we have because we're about one a little more than one third through the project and generally right about now you would know if like there was this massive like thing we everybody missed and we were going to have to spend a bunch of the contingency um and we're pretty safe right now. The contractor feels pretty good. Um, everybody, you know, has been, we have a monthly meeting on the project and um, uh, everyone feels feels pretty good about it. We do have some change orders that come. Some are credits to us, some are, we pay a little bit, like the, the new, um, the new, we had to put a new transformer kind of out there to run the plant with a new electricity and stuff and Eversource didn't figure that originally so that was a change order we had coming so we do use the contingency but there will be quite a bit left over so the idea is the proposal is is to kind of pull that contingency forward um and and we we are allowed to with um under the bidding rules to um to do a change order with our contractor who is excellent to kind of start doing some of the stuff that we couldn't do in phase two and try to, you know, try to use up all the money because if we don't spend it all, like the last part of the money we get is grant. So if, if we kind of finish up the project and we're 2.6 million ahead of schedule, uh, we just don't get any grant money. So the whole idea is to spend everything so we can get their grant money and there's, there's plenty to do at the plant. So, um, so the idea is that we should spend as much of the 19 million as we can with Waterline Industries and then privately fund the balance of phase two um, to try and get Waterline to bid on it because of, you know, set up their known entity. Um, we, we talked about should we go out to bid again for and, and go to USDA for phase two with this project and we feel like whatever we would save by getting a loan and a grant from USDA, we would probably pay in contractor mobilization. They're already there and set up. So, um, so but it's a it's a decision for all of us to make. Um, and then two, do we fund the rest of phase two and alternates on our own and, and use USDA for old Deerfield? Uh, it makes sense to finish what we can do, um, what we can by doing the alternates for phase two and hold on phase three unless we get some MVP grant money, which is like a 50% match. It's a huge chunk of money. So um, I'll talk a little bit about that too. Um, that phase three is really kind of effluent pipe that goes out to the 
out to the river that really needs to get redone. It wasn't kind of figured into our first go round on the plant. Um, and then resiliency, like higher walls on the aerators and 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 things. So um, so these are this is kind of a chart that uh, DPC put forward, and I think Skip has seen this. And Julie came to a meeting the other day, and this is kind of like looking at the original phase one. If you look at my cursor, so we have the phase one original. This was like what we what the original base bid was. We had a contingency, um, the engineering, and then we had the the bond council and interest and all of that. So that was our eleven that we originally did. Um, and then we have um, phase one updated when we decided to take on, we, we realized that when we did phase one, we couldn't really do the headworks building. And there was like a water project, like make updating the water uh, in the plant um, we had in phase two, but we really need to pull into phase one because with the headworks building, you needed a new water system to wash the wash everything. So, um, so we pulled some of the things from phase two into phase one. Um, so this kind of shows where, where we are right now, the 16 million. Um, so this is the um, possible change order. With, so we would kind of take our, it, it's the same sum of money, right? But we would take our contingency um, and, and then and, and move that uh, and move that into doing some of the projects that we could do, um, you know, leaving, you know, leaving 100,000, but we would move, you know, one point one seven into doing phase one um, additional items and use that up and then we have phase two bid which is kind of the the lungs of the project which is the aerators you know in the tank and some sludge work and then we have some alternates here as well i can get lists of all this stuff to you as well but it's kind of a, a again a high overview of this so we have um we have the original the updated this is would be a change order that we we really highly recommend doing and then we would go out and what we would try to do is is see if we could get a bid together pretty quickly on the engineering with Dave to get waterline to bid on this second one and I think that's where it would save us. From going out to bid with USDA and getting a whole new different contractor in there, I think we'd, we'd spend more this number would go up to do phase two if we did that. Um, and I think. Um, and then we have the alternates as well. So this 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 section from here over covers the 19 million we had. Um, this section, these alternates of phase two and phase three, we have we would have to go back to the town for. So we'd have to really and in phase three, we're really not looking at at this moment unless um, we could get MVP or some huge infrastructure money or. Again, the MVP grant where it's a large chunk of money to the town, um, we would have to take that to the town at that point. Um, but for my focus, I'm really focusing at phase two alternates and this way and phase two bid, base bid and over is what we've already kind of asked the town for. So we have this 2.7 and Skip might be able to elaborate on this a little bit, he had a little bit better with numbers in his mind, but just to kind of give you an idea of what this phase one and phase two is. Um, so phase two design is underway. So we, we said, look, we we need you know we need to do this. We're planning on doing the 19 million anyways. Let's get the design work done. So that is um, that is happening already. Um, so on the next slide, you'll see a list of options for old Deerfield. So that's that's the South Deerfield plant. That's what's going on. Again, I can come back to answer questions. Um, we have the old Deerfield plant, which is in worse shape. Was in worse shape than the. South Deerfield plant, um, but you know, served a lot fewer customers. Didn't you know? The kids were gone in the summer, so you, so you have this big fluctuation there. But it is just as old, in worse shape. Um, so the the idea is, do we turn that old Deerfield plant into one pump station? We would have um, one operator to serve one plant we wouldn't have to run two operators you know we wouldn't have two plants to run long term so we looked at would it make sense to turn that into a pump station um the questions were do we go down five and ten or mill village road if we went down mill village road would we want to add a second pump station so that we could pull in future edus from west side of i-91 um it's really the only way it would make sense to kind of do something large like that um, and then 
or, or you know, do we upgrade the plant and, and keep it running two plants into the future? Or do we band-aid the plant and, you know, limp it along from year to year or five year intervals or 10 years at a time? Um, so Dave is going back to look at that, um, that idea, do, you know, do we, how, how long can we kind of limp that along? And there's discussions with the nonprofits that need to happen. How much are we going to tackle? Um, how much can we tackle? How much can we afford? Because all this comes down to money, you know, what, what we can and can't do. So these are some options very similar to the other one um, where we had these massive numbers to look at, do we pump this down to South Deerfield? And just looking at it, it, it just, it's hard for me to kind of say this makes sense to do unless you had a MassWorks grant, some large, you know, company come in that wants to build a big big project and, and can afford to do something like that needs to get on the sewer at that end of town um, the numbers are are staggering you know you've got one alternate going down the town road which is mill village road um you know let me slide this up over here you know you're looking at like 20 22 000, 22 million bucks um the other alternate would be to do two pump stations it brings the the cost down because it's assuming that you would tie in 312 new users, but there's a lot of expense to that as well. Um, the third option was to go down five and 10 just became ridiculously expensive because of the thickness of the road and all the work that would need to get done on five and 10 it just is, isn't realistic. Um, and then again to do two pump stations in state road uh, again you'd bring in more people, not as many. Um, and then the last option is the upgrade to the old Deerfield plant, like we were thinking we'd probably have to do was around 16 million bucks. Um, that's kind of where we're settling in at the moment. And, and again, the other, the other, I guess, alternate five would be, what, what would we have to do year to year to keep the plant kind of running along as it is? I'm not in favor of that so much because, you know, just you can't get parts for this thing anymore it's just it's it's really old um the same kind of chart just split a different way if we had you know alternate users and other people um so the collection systems we have uh we have two areas i've talked about this a little bit we uh, that we need to work on here there's the south deer field and here we're in much better condition than we thought um uh, but it is the largest infrastructure you know it's all the pipes in south deer field so um, the cost to, to, to do those pipes, and it's a mixture of, um, you know, fully dig up and replace or lining the pipe. And then same thing with the, with the manholes. So that has a cost of roughly five million bucks. Um, the old Deerfield uh, is a smaller system, uh, but is, it is in much worse shape. So uh, Deerfield Academy graciously gifted funding to repair some piping that went through their campus last fall. We hope to get some more help for the rest of that pipe to the plant. Um, if we can't, we, we do need to move on that. That's, again, it's the last bit of pipe that goes to the plant. They were really great. They gave us um, $375,000 to redo the pipe. And we were able to dig up and replace and also line and do some, some manholes um, last fall. We have to go back and kind of pave the road this spring. Um, but I, I'm really hoping that they can help us with a little bit more of this. And again, the other area that I talked about is Pine Nook Road um, to Eagle Brook is, is really the worst that we have. Um, the pipes are like misaligned and and just in really bad shape. So we do need to replace all the infrastructure there. We need to redo um, the road as well. Uh, we need new culverts, railings. So that whole road going up Pine Nook is is a big chunk of money. Um, I, I've been told that they plan to replace the dining common within a year or two. So, you know, we would wait until all that heavy traffic was done before we even looked at you know, we, we have looked at the engineering, what it needs to do, um, but we, you know, we wouldn't move forward with any of that stuff until, you know, all the major construction is done up there. Um, this is some some additional pipe work from the plant from what DA did already to the plant um, is is really what needs to get done. And you know, we have photos and, and maps of this stuff I can get as well, but it's about five hundred and forty six thousand in work to do that little section. Um, and then um, 
that this is old Deerfield as a whole is around three million bucks. You know, it includes you know Pine Nook and all the rest of of town there. Again, we can do this pipe stuff um, over the years. It's not something we need to tackle all at once. Like we need to go get a loan, unless there was some massive chunk of money given somehow. And um, but we can fill this stuff in as we go. The the lining of the pipes is really unobtrusive and. You know it's when you have to dig it up it's a little more difficult but um a lot of it we can pipe you know the cure in place so we don't have to tackle all this all at once in either area um so uh south deerfield as a whole i'm trying to find this one as well i think it's around five million dollars um i think i had that wrong so old deerfield was three million this is five million in south deerfield um again we can do the piping over this time frame but um that's kind of it in a nutshell, you know, we're probably looking at all in, um, you know, we have 20 million at 20 to 22 million at the South Deerfield plant when we're done with that, not including phase three. Um, and we, we have an 8 million in collections that we need to deal with. And we have about 16 million at, at the plant if we go that way. So just to kind of give you some round numbers of, of, of where we're at um, on the project. So I know that it's high level and I can give you a lot more info. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them or try to, or get you answers. Let me stop my share here. Dr. Turk, go ahead. Trevor, thank you for the uh, presentation. Sure. I would like to, uh, let you know that you did a great job. But what I would like to see is when we, I look at my computer, it shows my picture on the right and two or three other people. So yeah. I don't see half of the minute, half exactly. of the notes that you have. Can yeah. I get a copy of your notes? Of course, of course. Yep, yep, I've got you it. Send that along to the finance committee, they could burn a copy. Of course. And give yep. us a copy of all the, the minutes so we yeah. can read it and study it a little better. And what all I think what now, what did you I say do, the total was for old Deerfield? Uh, for the pipe, uh, for the plant was about sixteen million, roughly in today's numbers, um, and the, and then the piping is around a little over three million. Okay, could you say that one more time? Yep, the piping uh, collection system is around three million, um, yeah. and then the um, and then the plant is sixteen million. 16 okay yeah when you we need to do a little bit of climate change kind of stuff john there so we're hoping to get at least through the mvp program to be paid for and it it's not really included but we when when the kids are gone and the river's really low in the summer it's not it's not so much of an issue but with climate change the shoulder uh seasons are made uh, still are hot or warm when the kids come and the water levels have been you know lower for longer than they than normal we have these big surges of frequent events as you know but we have really longer periods of low river so what happens is then we're up against our permit because we're um you know putting effluent into the river when there's such low flow so what we have, we'll have to do some kind of adjustment on the tanks to hold the tanks that we can adjust the releases to the releases of Great River Hydro, I don't, or whoever owns the dams. That, so when the water comes down from the dams, the, the river rises like a 20 year storm, you know, it's like a footish. So when that water comes down is when we need to be releasing our effluent. And we have to have the capacity to have our effluent. So um, we we need there that 15 million doesn't include that, but I would anticipate us being able to go, get a grant for any kind of resiliency and including raising the tank walls. So there's you know have uh, flooding, you know uh, no flooding issues. But as you know, even in Irene, which was a 500 year storm, the plant made it through just barely, but it did make it. So. Um, I don't think that we have to worry about too much of that, but we do have to worry about our permit. Mm -hmm. 
And plants uh, don't hold back water, like whatever's coming in goes out in the same amount of flow. So this would be an idea of differently of kind of stopping the flow out to the river until the river has a higher flow to, to release it. We, we would have to figure that that's not included in any of the design we've come up with so far. And again, uh, Dave's going to go back and look at, okay, if we don't rebuild the whole plant, what could we get by with and try to have another option there um, to figure out what we could do. It's just a tough, a tough spot, tough plant. So basically what you're saying is that when we add it all up, initially, I think the uh, projection five years ago was that we're gonna spend about 36 million mm -hmm. right now for all you've listed out. It looks like it's closer to 45 to 50 million. Yeah. And our total borrowing capacity for our town, according yeah. to what the state wants, is somewhere around 37 million. Correct. So we're way already over that. So now the question is, you can't stop halfway in between and just leave jobs undone. You have to get certain phases done and then band-aid wherever you have to do. Meanwhile, we got other options that we have to worry about, like taking care of the seniors somehow. Exactly. Yep. So we just, uh, you, you've got your, uh, you're earning your salary. Let me put it that way. <laughs> yes. Yep, it is. Isn't that and I appreciate it. And I appreciate everything that you're doing. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And this was a great presentation, Trevor. Thank you. Does anybody else on the finance committee have any questions? Open. To, no, to I don't see. Just to get mm -hmm. back to Jack, um, I, I will get everybody the um, my PowerPoint, and then I, I will try to just kind of put everything into um, like where I grabbed all of those uh, pictures from. There's a whole, I mean, there's some of them are 500 pages, but I'll try to narrow down just to the pertinent information for you to so that you could look at the whole thing and not just a one graph. There's there's a lot of a lot more information I can provide and put it in one spot for everybody to look at. Okay, thanks. We're going to open up to public comment. Tim Hilchie, you have your hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, Trevor, I was wondering if you could, uh, if, if you know, or if you could speak to what portions of either the old Deerfield plant or the pipe work uh, could be brought into what would be considered a shovel ready project with the infrastructure uh, money that's coming from the federal government. Um, what are our chances and what do we need to do if we're not shovel ready to get to a shovel ready state where we can actually go out and try to pull this federal money back into the town? Yep. Uh, so that's a great question. We, we aren't shovel ready for old Deerfield because we haven't um, we haven't gone to the taxpayers with a total number yet to say, you know, can we get uh, a debt exclusion for this? And then we would then fund uh, engineering uh, work. So we really need to fund or, or maybe we just go for a debt exclusion for just just the engineering for phase uh, for the for the um, old Deerfield plant. Uh, before we do that, though, I think we that all of us collectively should decide, you know, um, again, for sure to rebuild the plant or, you know, sh or, or we can get away with, you know, nine million of repair. And that'll get us another 15 years or something like that, you know, or, or, or something like, you know, a difference there somewhere. So um, we aren't shovel ready yet. We, we really need jo jobs that are already done with engineering. Um, that's what, well, phase two, we're, we're hoping to maybe get some help there. I just, you know, my worry was to go out on the phase two for the South Deerfield plant. Um, I just, in, unless we got, unless the state could step up with some real money, the problem is, is they've funneled all this money, but they, they have it in programs that don't benefit Deerfield very much. It's really hard to get your hands around that infrastructure money. I, I, I wish that it was like 1970 where they said, hey, we're going to build, I don't know how, how, maybe somebody knows how much they paid to build the plant to begin with. We need large infrastructure infusions like that. And uh, just talking to you know a few of the different politicians uh, really aren't finding these programs are flush like they're going to go through the original thing so Dave thought yeah the um, USDA will be flush with some cash for projects but you're 
grant to loan ratio is not going to be much better than it is now. They're just going to be able to fund more projects around around the region and not so much benefit us. But I could be wrong. Carolyn might have something to say better than that. I don't I don't know. I it's a struggle. Yeah. I no, I, I can't really add any much. We're, we're going to make sure that uh, from everything that I can, you know, all my meetings that I've been going to Northeast, you know, National Association meetings, everything, uh, money is coming through the USDA. But how much the percentage is going to be grant and the percentage is going to be loan, I'm hoping we'll switch so we will yeah. be able to maybe uh borrow less and have more of a, a bigger grant so right. it's really really important that we're doing as much as we can to look like we're shovel ready we have a relationship with usda um you know, we know the people in there already so they know we're a good risk we turn around the paperwork and that's really a big deal so um they have so much money coming through i'm i'm hoping that we will have a good opportunity. That's yeah, all I yeah. can say is that we're, you know, outreaching as much as possible. I would hope that we get more help somehow, but you know, we haven't heard that much really concrete other than that the money is being funneled through existing programs. Yeah. So my, my goal really would be to, um, with our working group to find out what the best avenue is for um, old Deerfield plant, what's the best chance we can get money? And then maybe I, if I can pull something off before our um, annual town meeting to ask for, a, you know, some engineering money, either debt exclusion or something to do um, to, to get plans ready for that, for that, um, that plant, what, whatever we're going to do. But in the next couple of months, we really have to get busy and Maybe it'll have to be a special town meeting if we can't get it done in time, but I, I really we, we do need to focus on that plant and um, and and you know talk with the nonprofits get every leverage every opportunity we can to um, get all the partners involved to get as much funding as we can. Um, tr the one thing that maybe Trevor didn't really emphasize or it, when you look at the alternatives, it makes no sense to really consider any the alternative with one pump system we have to do two pump system um so if you look at those two alternatives it's truly almost double the just keeping the plant existing plant so i i mm -hmm. you know from just pure numbers i think we just keep the existing plant so yeah. i think okay. we're moving forward with that um and then trying to figure out how we're going to finance that uh i don't know and again with i think with somebody talking about all the the all the projects that are coming at the town one shot it, we you know at some point you are over your levy you know your limit to borrow so we really have to be strategic about what is our you know wants and needs that's always talked about and um it and there there's could be two needs three needs but we've got to choose like what, what we can do, you know, what is mandated and what is something that, you know, you wish you could have, but you can't right away. So we've got to, we've got to really zero in on what these costs are. We have a library that's hoping to get word this year and, you know, senior center that needs it, senior housing, uh, town hall, senior housing, a senior center kind of thing. Um, there, but sewer is like really critical because it's mandated. So I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's tough spot to be in. For sure. But we'll come up with an answer one way or the other. I'm going to just throw one more comment out about the um, the old Deerfield plant. I was under the impression a couple years ago that if we did this pump station and sent everything down to South Deerfield, that that would reduce the number of operators that were required. It would. And then, but Dave Pritchett in the meeting the other day, he said that if you did the pump station, it came out to something like if you did the pump station, you had 3.8 FTE. And if you didn't do the pump station, if you had two separate systems, it was 4.2 FTE. So either way, it's four people. 
Yeah. Um, and so it really doesn't save us that person. Right. Um, well, it's a huge operating expense because you're changing out a gravity fed system for a yeah. system. Right. So it is, uh, I mean, so in my mind, it makes absolutely no sense to do yeah, the pump station business and, and all that. I, I was hoping it was going to be a much better alternative and would would shed us of that responsibility for the next hundred years. And I mean, obviously, we have pump station stuff to deal with, but um, a, a lot easier than running a plant. Um, so, but, you know, yeah, the numbers don't add up right now, unless, like you said, unless we had you know, some major en entity that pulled into town or there was a mass works grant or something that made it worthwhile to do like we were going to like as Yankee did a big expansion to pull the, you know, when they put those buildings in to pull that that pipe up that far that we don't have that right now. So anything All else right. that could answer anybody or thank so. you for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you so much for coming and giving this brief. The next item on the agenda is actually public comment. Um, so does any any of you public folks have any comments on anything else besides the sewer thing? Anybody? Raise your hand or speak up. No. All right. Um, the last thing I've got, unless I've lost it, is um, the agenda going forward. So we are going to meet um every tuesday ad infinitum um so right now the way we have it laid out can you guys see this <coughs> so here's the plan next week we're going to do select board responsible budgets board of health assessors february 22nd we're going to do the library scem senior center and council on aging and the town clerk we'll start into these if we can get to them March 1st, we're going to do police, public works, and wastewater treatment plant. March 8th, probably education, um, try town beach and finish up the town clerk stuff. And then we'll revisit and go on um, from then on. We'll be like the capital request and the stabilization fund, OPEB. And then we'll do the whole like look at the whole budget together and revisit whatever we need to revisit to get through that and then we'll go into the warrant articles um so that's kind of the schedule that i have laid out did i did i send this to everybody no I, or maybe if you did i didn't see it I'll send it out I, um so that you have it it will be in the agendas every week online once those come up uh, go ahead skip yeah one quick question uh the items for tonight that we didn't cover where when are you planning on those next week and then we'll fit them in if we don't get through them all next week well they'll just we'll hit them as we get to them <clears throat> as we have time the goal is to like not really go past seven every night if we can do that um we'll see how we do um, we confirm the dates of the meetings because according to my list we had Tuesday, February 8th, and Thursday, the 17th and 24th. We and No, we changed it at the end of that meeting. So it's every Tuesday at 5 o'clock okay. from now till town meeting. And the, the hope is that we'll finish up before then, and then we'll cancel the rest of those. But it's every Tuesday at 5 o'clock. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Yeah. All right. With that, um, oh, one last question. Do we want to ask um, for the education? They have Frontier and Deerfield both have a, um, like a public, what do you call that? Public information session on the budget, public um, a public hearing. There we go. Um, do we want to invite them to finance committee also, or will we attend that public hearing? Anybody have opinions on that? Traditionally, the select board and the finance committee have gone to the, mm -hmm. the school public hearings and yep. uh, only because everybody's crazy with meetings. Um, yeah, but they then, have a lot of meetings to go to. So Right. But then I think if there's issues, then I think you should invite them back. 
I mean, maybe, I yeah, that seems like a good way to approach it. So we'll go to the public hearing. And then if after the public hearing, we still have questions, we can invite them to come. That's a good plan. Thank you. Good suggestion. All right. Um, anything else anybody wants to talk about? We've covered everything on our agenda. We're ready for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Oh. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. We'll call a vote. John Paturk. Aye. John Paresky. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Skip Olmstead. Aye. Julie Chauvin, aye. That's unanimous. All right. Thank you, everybody. This um, is an interesting meeting. will adjourn, too. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you all very much for tonight. Appreciate it. Trevor, you got to vote. <laughs> okay. I, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, <laughs> Carolyn. Okay. We're Thank official. You all. Good night. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Thank this you. was very helpful. All right. Have a good night. Have a good night.